Well, I got the computer fix, which is awesome. Um, it wasn't dead after all. Really thought it was. Uh, today I planned to show you two cars, but I broke one before I drove it. Oh, really? <sighs> that sucks. And that is my Thunder Dragon. I must have did something wrong with the gearbox. Um, the pinion on this brushed BZ motor stripped off part of the spur gear. So I don't really know why that happened. Um, but I've ordered new gears from Hong Kong and they'll be here next or this week, next week. And uh, then I'll get this fired up and try not to break it again. So maybe the gearbox are a bit weak in these, these old kits. So we're gonna set that aside today. And what we're looking at today It is a much heavier car, partially because the battery's in it, but my big wig build. So originally I was going to have these two go head to head, but that one just destroyed itself. So we'll just look at this one individually. Um, I finished building it a couple weeks ago and uh, we'll uh, go over it. And it's a very unique car. I think anyone who's into building Tamiya cars, especially the old Riri cars, should really take a look at building a big wig. It is a completely unique experience and I really really enjoyed it. Though I'm not a hundred percent sure if like that steering mechanism up front is is, is great. <laughs> so without further ado, ado, let's take a look at the big wig. As I said this was a really enjoyable build. I have never built something quite like this before. I have plenty of classic Tamiya's. Um, I went box art with it I don't usually go box art with cars, but I figured this one was so great. I had some ideas um, to do it a bit differently, but I figured it was so great I might as well go uh, box art. Um, so I just want to start. The first thing that maybe not apparent to a lot of people that's quite unique is how the body mounts. The body mounts on a hook that hooks through a screw here in the back on top of the motor mount. So first you put it down and you hook in the back and then you put down the front and snap it on. So that's something I've never seen on an RC car. Uh, it's completely unique to the big wig. Let me just put this in. That's a very interesting way to put the um, body on and it is quite stable as you can see. Um, another thing that's uh, totally unique about the big wig is how the body the body literally follows the chassis you can look there it's specifically designed and they have a couple plastic pieces here that are are taped on that are separate from the body you can see the men underneath I don't know if you can quite see that on camera um, they go in underneath I'll show you that in a moment um, they're also Lexan. I'm going to shoe goo mine on because the double sided tape keeps pulling off. But the body completely follows the line of the chassis to block the dirt. Of course the inside section is also solid. And even down on the front bumper, the body goes, a, goes around. There's a plastic lip on the bumper and the body covers it. So it's a very interesting design that way. They put a lot of work into trying to keep dust from entering this car. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's pull the body off again. And you'll see those extra, they just paint it white, I didn't back, back coat them. But those extra Lexan pieces, that's just to block dirt from coming in these kind of vents or these 
wings on the side. So it's a very unique body. I did it back in silver. Um, I did the paint a bit different. This is a metallic blue, uh, deep metallic blue from Tamiya. It is beautiful and I'm so glad I did box art because it contrasts so well with the white. This is the plain white PS1 I think it's called. Um, it's a beautiful body. It's interesting that it incorporates hard plastic or ABS and Lexan all into one body. Um, another thing interesting is little details like on the front here this instrument panel is fronted with metal. The roof is actually made of metal. Um, so we got metal pieces, we have hard plastic pieces like the driver and ABS pieces all integrated into a Lexan body. So there was certainly a lot of design work um, put into that. I did do the original sticker set on it and originally I thought this was an ugly car. Um, I think a lot of people did when it was released. Um, but the more I look at it, the more I like it. And I think it's actually brilliant. So that's it for the body. I think that's the most interesting feature. Um, inside, I have all my electronics and my battery and everything inside. The battery fits lengthways. I'm running a LiPo. And with the extra cords and stuff, I don't need the foam to keep it in place. Um, so with the car, there's still more and more unique features uh, to come. So one is this top plate, which made putting in ESC and some components a little bit more difficult. It just flips out and that's to hold down things. Um, underneath, you'll see I have my battery, no straps or anything. It's just, it's just stuck in there. It's just jammed. I'm using fly sky. So I have a really big receiver. Um, and there's my hobby wing, uh, 1060, uh, brushed ESC. Um, so one thing you'll see in here is this plastic, yellow plastic. That's actually what holds the servo in place. Um, the servo doesn't bolt to the car. I've never seen that before. It actually sets, it bolts to this bracket and the bracket squeezes it. And there's a piece of double-sided tape on the other side and squeezes it in place so it doesn't move. Um, totally unique design. I did find that like I can't put this ESC because of the plugs. I can't put it over. It won't fit under that top plastic piece. It's a little bit limiting. Um, I do have a really big receiver, FlySky receiver, and to put that in, you can actually see in there, you can see a screw. Um, the base of this chassis is all ribs for, for strength. And I actually took a piece of ABS and cut it to fit this space so I could actually attach my uh, receiver to it. Um, this is the drive shaft. It's kind of piddly, but it should work fine with a brush motor. Um, so the other very unique thing about this chassis is the steering mechanism. So when you look at the bottom, you start to see some unique things like these boots and it's rack and pinion steering. Now I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think it's really cool. It's all dust proof encased in grease. Um, I'm running a Futaba Metal Gear servo. It's not waterproof or anything, but it's a good servo, nice and quick. But I did know, notice, there's not a lot of steering in this car. <laughs> so I think if Tammy had done more rack and pinion steering, they could have certainly got more steering than that out of their cars. But compared to the ones that didn't use rack and pinion, like the Thunder Dragon, it also doesn't have a lot of steering compared to modern cars or two wheel drive models. Two wheel drive models tend to have a lot of steering. So that's very unique. Um, other unique features for, for any Tamiya kit, is they actually have a dummy motor and dummy exhaust. So this kind of detail you don't tend to see. Um, when you look at things like the suspension, this is very robust. Okay, you have your A-arms upper and lower and they're very thick and they're very strong. Um, so very robust. Same goes for the front. You'll see the same on the hot shot, but same goes for the front. Um, you have captured balls on these, top and bottom, put in with metal plates, lots of little screws. I'd hate to break this, like getting these parts, I don't think it'd be very simple, um, but it works quite well. Um, another 
kind of unique thing is, and I can't really show it on camera, but when you go to fit the motor, to fit different pinion sizes, you fit it with metal plates, metal shims. I've never seen that before. Um, shimming um, where the screws go in so the motor and the pinion match up. So that was kind of a unique thing about building it. Um, this kit does come with really heavy uh, duty uh, drive shafts on the wheels or axles front and back. And that was good to see. The one upgrade besides going with, with a hobby wing, they don't come with a um, ESC anyway, but I don't use the Tamiya ones, but going with hobby wing, I use the GT tune motor um, that comes with the kit and it's it's pretty cool because it's actually labeled oh, that shows up on camera but it's labeled big wig um, what's really what what's really cool um, with this motor actually with this ESC and the 2S lipo is this car actually does wheelies <laughs> it does on carpet anyway I don't know what it'll do outdoors so that's kind of cool um, the one upgrade you may have noticed is I upgrade the shocks and these are TTO2 or DFO3 um, shocks I put on front and back. Um, I like to get rid of the plastic plastic ones when I can so I spent a bit of money and I threw those on. I don't know if it'll really improve performance or not. Uh, as far as the car goes I haven't driven it yet. We're gonna take it outside and uh, we're gonna do some driving today. It's a nice day for it um, but it is heavy. This is a very big heavy duty chassis. This is a heavy car. Uh, I hope it performs well. I don't think I'll bash it too hard because getting replacement parts means, because I live here in China, some things you just can't get here, even though they're probably made in a factory here. And I end up having to import from Hong Kong, Taiwan, or Japan. So eh, I can get a little bit expensive to get a little piece of plastic. So as far as the car goes, I, I am impressed. I am so glad I bought a big wig. Anyone who is um, building Tamiyas, especially us old guys that are building Tamiyas, it's their hobby uh, to build cars. Um, I really suggest if you can get one of these uh, re-release models, picking it up, picking one up for yourself, um and and building it just to see some very unique design features some very specific to this model ideas and actually in the end come out with a really great looking um, buggy that was very well engineered it's, it's a shame it didn't do so well uh, when it was first released it was totally different than anything that came before it and people just weren't ready um, oh, another thing I want to mention, I do really like the wheels from this era. I do really like the rims. Um, totally white. I think this thing is stunning. And the detail work, the air scoop, the roll cage, um, the engines and the exhaust. It's, it's a modeler's car and it's actually, performance wise, it'll probably do quite good. On 2S LiPo, as I said, in the living room anyway, I was doing wheelies. And uh, it might be really fun when we take it out. So let's take it outside. Yeah, I don't think the steering is super awesome. <laughs>
it um, it jumps really nice. Oh, this is box.
little bit dirtier. A little scrape up here. Um, I haven't run a full battery through it, but I really need to get another car out here and uh, race them together. So far though, this thing is super fun. Oh, I have a DFO3. Ooh, the motor is really hot. I have a DFO3 uh, MS kit. I think this is more fun. Um, it hugs the ground. If only the steering had a little bit more steering. Um, this could compete. This could definitely still compete um, with RC cars. I think the shocks helped. Um, they got um, hard shock oil in them. They're pretty, like she has droop. You have droop in the suspension. It's pretty soft. I could change the springs on it, but we do have a bit of droop and it just hugs the earth. I am so impressed with this. Um, and it did not break and I crashed it like a dozen times. So that's good. It's no breakage. Only one little, little mark on this. That's to be expected. That's one thing that's gonna hit. Shocks are great. I'd recommend if you build one of these to throw in the Tamiya shocks. Uh, a little look at the bottom. I'm gonna have to clean that up, so that's dog doo-doo. A um, few scrapes on it, not too bad. Nothing's coming apart. Still drives straight. All the plastics held up. As I said earlier, this is really heavy duty uh, suspension system. Now, before we finish, let's open it and see how much dirt got inside. Cause I'm kind of curious, cause it's obviously designed not to get too dirty. Uh, dusty, bit of dust, a couple strands of grass came in the back, but all in all, that's pretty good. Come on, let this one open though. Oh, not too bad. Still in good shape. All right. Um, all right, so we'll pack it up. Uh, we'll have this out a different day. And we'll see how it performs. We might, we might take it out with the uh, Thunder Dragon or my friend is building uh, uh, an Evo. Uh, what's it called? Top Force Evo. And he's putting that together right now. So maybe, maybe we'll put the, those two head to head. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll uh, catch you next time.